Yellowstone supervolcano activity. How much volcanic activity has taken place at the supervolcano in Wyoming since its last giant super eruption? The caldera forming eruption, that is. There was a massive eruption that took place about 631,000 years ago, and it was in a span of 170 years apart. It was a double eruption. Approximately 80 relative non-explosive eruptions have taken place since then. There was another one about 70,000 years ago and 80,000 since then. Now, of these eruptions, at least 27 were rhyolite lava flows in the caldera. 13 were rhyolite lava flows outside the caldera and 40 were basalt vents outside the caldera. The most recent volcanic eruption in Yellowstone, the lava flow on the Pitchstone Plateau, took place about 70,000 years ago. Now, why are there so many earthquakes at Yellowstone? Almost all earthquakes at Yellowstone are brittle failure events causing caused when rocks break due to crustal stresses. Though we've been looking at Yellowstone for years, no one has yet identified long period events, the LP events, commonly attributed to magma movement. If an LP event is observed, that will not mean Yellowstone is getting ready to erupt. LP earthquakes commonly occur at other volcanoes in the world, including the volcanoes in California, that have not erupted for centuries or millennia. One variety of ground shaking called tremor is observed at Yellowstone's geothermal areas whenever water boils in a geyser. The latest historic earthquake in the Rocky Mountains uh, at Yellowstone was a magnitude 7.3 earthquake at Hebgen Lake, northwest of Yellowstone. In, it occurred in uh, 1959, August 17th, from what I remember. It was caused by the extension or the stretching of Earth's crust, according to the geologists. The earthquake displaced 25-mile fault that rose vertically up 40 feet. Shaking from the earthquakes can also change the way the Yellowstone's hydrothermal systems behave. The interval between eruptions of Old Faithful Geyser increased significantly after that Hebgen Lake 1959 earthquake. As you can see here, this is a plume that goes from Baja, California, all through Utah into Yellowstone. Now, when will the next large earthquake occur in Yellowstone? Well, we can't predict, that's what the scientists say, but modern surveillance conducted with seismograph, the instruments that measure the earthquake's location magnitudes, and the global position assistant GPS instruments measuring slow ground movements, help the scientists understand the state of stress in the Earth's crust, and those stresses could trigger earthquakes as well as a magma movement. Yellowstone lies within a tectonically active region of the United States, western United States. Large earthquakes occurred there in the past, like, as we said, the 1959 Hebgen Lake earthquake of magnitude 7.3 west of the park. They will occur again in the future, but it's impossible to know when. The University of Utah uses seismographic stations to carefully monitor earthquakes in the greater Yellowstone area and works with other Yellowstone volcano observatories, the partners to keep watch on the entire volcanic system. Now, can an earthquake trigger volcanic eruptions? Well, we know that a supervolcano is different from a regular volcano in that a supervolcano is bigger, which means that the uh, dome, the uh, covering, the ceiling of the magma chamber is a lot bigger. And earthquakes can uh, have a, an influence of shaking Yellowstone and even cracking the roof. That's the fear of uh, geologists. Not an eruption, but a, an earthquake cracking the roof. Now, sometimes they say yes, a few large regional earthquakes greater than magnitude 6 are considered to be related to the subsequent eruption or some kind of onset at a nearby volcano. But volcanoes can only be triggered into eruption by nearby tectonic earthquakes if they are already poised to erupt. And this requires two conditions to be met. One is enough eruptible magma within the volcanic system, 
and two, significant pressure within the magma storage region. If those conditions are met, it's possible that a large tectonic earthquake might cause dissolved gases to come out of the magma, like a shaking of the soda bottle, increasing the pressure and possibly leading to an eruption. Now, it's not only on Yellow, at Yellowstone that we have a supervolcano. We have one about 600 miles southwest of there, the Long Valley Caldera Supervolcano of California, and uh, the high threat volcanoes of the West Coast. But we also have a supervolcano, which is a Yellowstone-like mega caldera, which has a lot of... Uh, Craters there in the area of Ontario, Quebec, upstate New York, Maine, the southeast, the um, eastern uh, United States, and that is a surprise which we learned about yesterday. Will extinct volcanoes of the east coast of the U.S. ever erupt again? Well, we've had, seen maps that are red under that area, showing that there's a lot of magma under there. But the USGS says no. The geological forces that generate volcanoes in the eastern United States millions of years ago no longer exist. This is what they say on the USGS site, and I'll leave a link. Through plate tectonics, the eastern U.S. has been isolated from the global tectonic features, tectonic plate boundaries and hotspots in the mantle that cause volcanic activity. So new volcanic activity is not possible now or in the near future. If you wait around several hundred million years, maybe, remnants of past volcanism are found in most areas of the Earth, even where volcanoes have not erupted in hundreds of millions of years. They are very common. Okay, they talk about uh, plate tectonics and the plate boundaries. Uh, the plate boundary of North America is in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. But we do have magma under there, especially under the, the mid-continental rift around the Great Lakes, where we have magma even today. And that stretches like a horseshoe shape. As you can see here, that big red blob on the top is right over the Great Lakes. And this is where we're having the, um, a lot of quakes lately, very strange quakes. And just to the northeast of that is the supervolcano. Okay, I call it the Yellowstone-like supervolcano. It's ancient, it's about two and a half billion years old, but there's a lot of magma up there. We've had very strange East Coast earthquakes there lately that have been felt all the way to uh, Long Island. Now, as you can see here, the western part of this mantle, the magma goes all the way into Texas and then turns uh, west into New Mexico, and that's why we're having a lot of earthquakes in that area. There's mantle there. It's a rift valley, the mid-continental rift, and on the east, it flanks uh, New Madrid seismic zone. So that is magma under there. It doesn't have to be just at the end of the tectonic plates. I'll leave links below for you for this. Thank you. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today more of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.